Let's see. Those are starting. Once more, this is a sound test. <laughs> <laughs> we should be okay. Um, we'll get everybody from the live stream to do one. Um, The link should be the same. It should not be any time. Okay. So, for posterity, when this is undoubtedly posted on its own without the video that we fucked up, um, we didn't have sound a minute ago. So, we should have sound now. Mm. It's time with sound. We're coming. Yes, we can hear you, they say. Sweet. <clears throat> Hurrah. Hello, properly this time. Hi, everybody. Hurrah. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween to everyone. Um, we'll give everybody a minute to pop into the new live stream. Mm. Um, good job, us. The reason this was a little haphazard is because we were going to stream on YouTube. Um, YouTube's a little more accessible to a lot of people because you don't need to have an account, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then YouTube decided we weren't allowed to stream, actually. Um, so we had to come back over to Facebook at the last second. Um, so we're sorry for any of the confusion, and we're sorry for not doing a sound test. We didn't have time. Uh, so, so, just what we want, right? In the future, we will have this down like a well-oiled machine. We are off <laughs> our game from being away for like two years. Yeah, from the plague. Um, and actually longer since we've had you here in person, because we did have Robot Alexa That's right. for a video That's or right. two. Um, so we are here. Uh, we are getting questions that weren't allowed. Yeah, we went to go stream on YouTube, and it said, your account is not approved for streaming? Mm -hmm. On YouTube? It was going to make us wait for two, two days. Yeah. Oh. Um, so we don't know why it did that. Uh, we haven't violated any TOS that I know of because we haven't uploaded a video in like two years. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Probably they shouldn't be mad at us, but uh, we shall see. Um, so, all y'all who are in here know who we are, but for when we post this, we're going to do intros anyways. So we'll start at that end. What do mean? We'll start at this end. Yeah. <laughs> Can't talk. We're drinking water. Um, you're just like, no, I don't drink, drink water, y'all. Um, especially if you're partying with people, you drink water. Um, yes. My name's Mouse. I write a lot of fantasy. I write in dystopia. Um, I just write, write. I like to write. Um, a lot of stuff that examines the way we interact as humans, and sometimes there is a fantasy dressing on that, and sometimes there is a sciencey dressing on that. But really, it's just about how we interact as. Um, yeah, Anya's cloak is fucking mm -hmm. lit, actually. Um, it better be. <laughs> we're not going to talk about how much it costs. <laughs> um, but it's like, um, it's like weatherproof, so like, it's not, um, Fair. I don't know that it's completely waterproof, but it's water resistant. And it's nice and heavy. Um, Alexa has a beautiful skeleton hand as well. A la mouse. This is mouse's originally, and then I stole it. Lent to the Alexa. Lent. Um, speaking of, who are you? My name is Alexa Windsor, short for Alexander Windsor. I uh, write uh, mostly horror, mystery, some paranormal romance. Um, I also want to make a couple of games in the future, like a visual novel romance. Um, I actually want to uh, finish some books before that and then research how exactly those things are done. Oh, God, and then they finish some books? Maybe. Sounds awful, actually. Uh, you mean I can't just write forever and then not do anything with it? I know, right? Okay, although Silky Dusk, which is my work in progress at the moment, is was mostly written through voice, and then I transcribed it. But the bulk of the book, like 75% of the book, was written by voice, and then I'm going through and editing it. I frankly love that technique, actually. So, it, it does the work for... Putting words down, that way I don't have to write. That I just have to go <laughs> back to writing. <laughs> yeah, it writes itself. <laughs> um, who's the person at the end of the couch? Who are you? I'm Anya. I write mostly fantasy. Um, so 
some of the same kind of stuff as mouse. Um, I don't know, what else? Uh, what else do you do? Um, you do a lot of editing work. Hi, Mom. <laughs> oh, hello, Alexa Mom. Yes, she wanted to watch our stream. Also, um, you will agree with this. Um, someone brings up that the Dead by Daylight visual novel was awful. Yes. And okay. hated it because it was written by it cowards. I don't know if I like the hate, but I hate it. it I, I did not even know that there was a Dead by Daylight. Uh, well, it sucks, actually. It should be... Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to get into this on the stream, but like... Okay, it, we have an audience of it, five people, so The concept of it is so good, but they completely messed it up with the writing. I will have to research it later, but I do have... The, my, the visual novel I had is called Brave Until Dark. It is going to be slightly urban fantasy romance. Um, you will date monsters, but the first, you know, big installment will tend to be more... Um, more, not hominids. Most of them will be people shaped until later so that people playing at first are going to be scared away and then when they're invested I'll hit them with the monsters. That's how we're <laughs> going to do this. We start <laughs> with like the vampires and stuff like that. Yeah. And we just get gradually yeah. more weird. <laughs> I'm super into that. <laughs> um, great idea actually. Yes. Um, segues nicely also into our next point. Would you all like some monster themed questions for Please. Halloween? Please. Yes. Um, audience, um, we would love for you to also let us know your opinions on these questions. Um, so we're going to start with who is your favorite Halloween monster? I know who my favorite monster is, but who we won't count, count everything okay, about him. Okay, does that have to be like an official monster, or is it just like... Um, I mean... Like, does it have to be sourced, or is it just like... So I think it should be from a thing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be from a thing that we traditionally associate with Halloween. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, do we have lawyers in the audience? Are they going to stop us? Like, oh, no, no. Who knows? I will say, the people who know me will not be surprised at all by this. Mothman. It's not a Halloween monster. We said it didn't have we to said be it Halloween. You said Halloween, Halloween monster. monster. Um, that Alexa will answer Mothman is completely unsurprising. We know this. But yeah. okay, if we want to go traditional, like, already established lore Halloween, I will say I love werewolves. Mm -hmm. We love a werewolf. Tell me. Your thoughts about, like, what is, what is it about werewolves that is so cool? Okay. On the one hand, sometimes... Okay. Really, I love... You just want to have a significant other and a dog. I just want to have... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want to have a, 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 a very furry, warm dog I can cuddle with. Um, but also, I do love it when people come closer to the, the beast. So it's like if it's a werewolf that has a supernatural aspect of a beast. I personally like it when the line is blurred between them. I like them maybe wanting to keep a hold of their humanity, but also maybe giving in to the beast. I like Do we that. like that for the struggle? Do we <laughs> like that because we think that the beast is the more honest part of man? Both. I like, well, I like, like the like kinds of questions. Like, there's other to struggle with. Yes. <laughs> I like sad people. <laughs> um, I think it's a fair answer. I think the struggle is a lot of fun to play with I and explore. Right. I think you're right. Anya, a monster you love. I'm going to have to say vampires, I think. Vampires is so nice So this is what yeah. At one it point, you didn't give a damn about vampires. So tell us about your growing vampire so, appeal. It's actually, for a lot of reasons that are not necessarily the first things you think about um, when you think of vampires, but it's more so like, it's less like the monstery stuff and more like the fact Wait, that they're so immortal. Froze. Are we still frozen? We might just be frozen for one person, let's find out. Um, um, but yeah, dealing with immortality? The, yeah, like that's a lot of it. And um, <clears throat> just like how they deal with that in their societies tend to be very interesting and um, 
just how different people deal with vampirism is really interesting to me. So the um, when will you learn that your actions have consequences? Side of vampirism and immortality and yeah, and I think and like, the socio-political structure. I think a lot of it I can also um, point to watching Castlevania, <laughs> which was really good, and you should. Castlevania watch it. got you into vampires. Well, I don't know if it got me into it, but definitely got me thinking about different things. Because Castlevania's vampires are, I think, on a larger scale than a lot of the vampires that I've thought about before. I definitely think, while Castlevania isn't the only show to do this, um, it definitely is one of the more recent ones that deals with vampires at scale, uh, and that deals with the, like, inner politics of these people who have had to deal with each other for a thousand years. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's the politics that I like. Yeah! <laughs> we all love our pol political shenanigans. Um, so yeah, like, rather than what you usually see from a lot of vampire not all, but a lot, where it's more one-on-one -on -one and less societal. So I can understand But also, I also really like werewolves, so... I love mean, a good dog. One of my favorite ever video games is Vampire the Masquerade. I mean, video games and tabletop porn. There's a lot of, like, really fun stuff to play with. That can either be one-on-one -on -one or a commentary on vampire and human society. So. VTM probably ranks as my most quoted game of all time. Mm -hmm. um, because it has the no you stop. Um, I love the weird. I like that. I'll put that on my to-read list. Um, also, the good news about the comments is that if you forget, you're like, what book is it? I could just pull the comments. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I, I'm making all this commentary to avoid the fact that I don't know what my answer is. <laughs> well, that, yeah, what's what's, you on you, what's, what's your answer? favorite answer? Um, I'm surprised it's not vampires, honestly. So, so like, okay, both of you bring up what I consider to be like my favorite points about both of these things. I love playing with kindred cultures and like, when you build a society for so long, how does that look and what kind of influence does it have? Um, how do you create that kind of society out of people who aren't born into it, who can only buy into it as adults? Um, so that's really neat to me. I love the idea of any kind of wear creature um, as revealing our inner selves mm -hmm. our more honest side without the veneer of society over top like I really those are both really good points um I like fish people yeah. <laughs> okay I I would think I have I a water monster not Please, a no. monster but I love witches yes I've been on a witch kick recently witches I, are sorely underused I love witches as <clears throat> um this is in the same vein of you give a regular ass person access to power over situations they don't usually have and how does that express itself. And we usually do that with like other kinds of magic, but a straight up witch um, is also a really good way of examining that. I will also add that I have one wear piranha character. Uh... <laughs> I haven't told you about them yet, but I will. I will. Makes feelings. <laughs> Someone's going to wear cow. Uh, I would get a wear cow. Um, someone brought up Frankenstein's monster. Would I date Frankenstein's monster? He's super well read. Um, we're giraffe. No, <laughs> I'm allergic to giraffe monsters because of Pokemon and One Piece. <laughs> so I refuse to entertain the idea of giraffe monsters. This started as your favorite monster, and I took it in the wrong direction of which one would I date. <laughs> um, but really, I just monsters do such neat things. Narratively, I'm gonna cop out and say I like all the Like all the monsters, you it's made like us have monster. to choose one. <laughs> I didn't twist any arms. I want to hear about your piranha fighter like later. Spider demons named Nixie. Oh. Um, so the reason Nixie is a spider demon is because I really wanted to write a Jorogumo. Yeah. Um, I just think Jorogumo are neat. Um, paying glands are neat. But so the whole idea of the monstrous woman. Yeah. <laughs> of the if you are lured in by the hot babe, you will die. Um, I have one of those. Well, like, I have one of those too. I get I get killed by a hot bit. <laughs> Let's be real. Um, but the um the idea of the monster summoners really neat. 
Um, so I really like all of those things. The Penang Land, which is the head with the organs falling out and they fly around and they scream. Mm -hmm. um, we hate those. I mean, hate them as in I wouldn't want them. It would be goopy, but uh, I love the idea. Mm -hmm. um, Speaking of which, remind me to tell you about Solara later. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, sure. New sure. Oki just dropped her name Solar. You'll love oh, her. baby. Head empty, no thought. <laughs> um, so, excellent, excellent point. Same, same basic idea with the human animal demons like the spider demons and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Is does it bring out that monstrous side of people? And yeah. that's just yeah. so cool. Oh, uh, it's a Momo. A Momo. Oh, I know. We do. We have a wild Momo chat. Um. So, next question. Your favorite Halloween or will include convention? costume that you've made that i've made made that you've made so you don't have to necessarily have made it from scratch but you've made a part of it favorite costume that you've made i um. will say that i did i don't know if i made like sewed anything but the stefano valentini costume that i cobbled together That's, from different pieces well, I like that. That you didn't go out and buy a stefano <laughs> costume no no i i kind of yeah Put it down. Um, I really enjoyed it. I liked threatening you with my gigantic axe. <laughs> <laughs> Stefano Valentini is from The Evil Within. It's a game on... Speaking of, I was having someone listing off, like, you know, horror games to play for Halloween. Evil Within! It's really only good. the first one! <laughs> Why only the first one? No, I'm just being spicy. Oh, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> the second one has really good content in it. Yeah. It's just, I feel like, a little more disconnected. Yeah. We're not going to turn this into an Evil Within critique yeah, for yeah. now. Um, Anya? Hornet from Hollow Knight. Yeah! yeah. <clears throat> that counts! I just feel so badass in that <laughs> costume, and also it has a bonus that nobody can perceive me while I'm wearing it, which is like plus 10 to, yes. the, to the costume. Yeah. And yeah. I just think it also just looks stunning, yeah. so. Oh, you want a Lucille Ball? That's cool as hell! Ooh! Lucille Ball is, like, academically speaking, a bad bitch. Um,. So absolutely 10 out of 10. Um, so I'm really not sure. Um, I Oh, also the Poe Collector. I like the Poe Collector. I well. love the Poe it's Collector. Still, it's still technically a work in progress because I'm doing, uh, I'm improving it all the time. So it's like in its second draft form uh, or second know. version. We do love it. Anyway, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm very proud of all of the hollow creatures. Um, the hollow knight costumes, I'm really proud of. Um, I am sure of nothing, by the way. Um, I didn't make, but I did assemble the pieces for Cyber 6. Cyber um, Six is awesome. And I really enjoyed being Cyber Six, even though nobody knew who I was. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt about Headhunter. I was really proud of the mask that I made for Headhunter. Your Headhunter costume is really good. Um, it's just nobody knows who Headhunter is because nobody has played Katana Zero, and that makes me cry. No, no. but first of all, I mean, games to play for Halloween. You yeah, can play yeah. Katana Zero, it counts. <laughs> um. Oh, um, my Sycamore costume? Oh, Sycamore. Um, uh, Mola just reminded me of it. Um, but it's very hard to say, like, my favorite made costume. <laughs> Some of my favorite costumes were not made and are thus excluded. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, favorite ones, the ones that I've touched? Mm -hmm. Probably. Probably. Or I'll go way, way retro since before I was conning with you guys and saying DeLando. <laughs> I'm going to um, say, uh, we should also do, like, okay, not made costumes. Favorite, favorite purchased or? No, favorite Halloween costume. Not convention. Favorite Halloween costume you had. Favorite Halloween costume ever. Actually, one of the next questions is your favorite one that you wore as a young one. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's um, basically what so I'm So, favorite about. actual, specifically Halloween costume. Yes. Um, 
Uh, I can start. With go for it. Go ahead. So I had a scarecrow costume oh. that my mom made. From it was one of those things you buy the pattern and then make it. Yeah. Uh, and it was, I loved it. Um, one of the years I sat out out front of the house giving away candy to kids because I was a teenager probably. <laughs> um, and I just pretended to be inert, an inert scarecrow with a bowl of candy on my mm -hmm. lap. And I scared some kids that way. And you they, had a real good time? Somebody uh, like was going to take a whole handful and I'd be like, only one. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. It was just fun. Yes, I was Misty from Pokemon when I was in my teenage years. I remember that one well. My favorite was probably when I was a witch, though. I had like a cloak and a long dress and everything. Oh, I had yeah, spooky very makeup. fancy. Yeah, I was a fancy witch. Also, uh, now, now I probably realize it's probably the scarecrow costume because uh, gender neutral. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna second that um, because my favorite. Looking back, I was like, man, I did Sailor Moon once, and I had a really good time. And a vampire, and I had a really good time. I was like, you know what was my favorite costume? Is I went as like a punk, <laughs> um, and I had black eye makeup, um, and I had this. Um, it's not. What's what I'm looking for? It's a pattern that goes like this. Crisscross. Yeah. What do you call it? Fishbone. <laughs> Plaid. 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 Thank you, but I was like, I'm like, no, no, it's no, okay, it's okay. I had a plaid, like, flannel vest thing with a hood. Oh. Uh, I wore ripped up jeans, and then I was like... <laughs> you know, like, oh, I'm powerful. <laughs> yeah, oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, it gave me emotions, for sure. Um, so I... That's the problem right there. I just had the most fun in it. It was the most comfortable. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, here's a question. This is a non-costume question. Halloween question of okay. audience as well. Would you rather spend Halloween night at a haunted house? Mm -hmm. Like what, a... What kind? An actual house that everyone says is haunted. Okay. Okay. Or in a cemetery. Oh, oh that's a tough one. Haunted house. Haunted house? Yeah. What's your reasoning? You answered that really quick. Um... On the one hand, the haunted house might be warmer. Yeah, okay, <laughs> we're gonna, that's fact we're gonna assume it. weather is on your side. Yeah. For the sake of evening it out. I just think graveyards are creepy. <laughs> on like, anti graveyard. Well, I'm not as against a being spooked. Like, <laughs> um, I just think a haunted house is cooler. Either in a graveyard, either you go out and you nothing happens. Or you go out and you get it's supremely freaked out, and then you're in the middle of a graveyard. <laughs> Is that functionally or emotionally different than being freaked out in the middle of a house? Well, I just think it'd be easier to get out of the house. You jump out a window. <laughs> and you're, you know, I'm sprint, second sprint to the end. Well, yeah, if you <laughs> if the devil's after you. <laughs> Now, you see, I have to say cemetery. Okay, tell me a reason. Because that gives me more monsters in order to kiss. That, that's why I would Oh, so you're going to bring dinner yes. and flowers. Uh-huh. I mean, I vibe with that. Um, <laughs> well, what if the windows and doors are locked? Yeah, what are you going to do then, Anya? Kick them out. <laughs> Kick them out. There's got to be one door, at least, that isn't locked. Um, <clears throat> so some, some valid points brought up in the chat. Um, okay, but you say think of phasmophobia, but there's not a phasmophobia level in the graveyard. It's because most of the time you're being hired to go and identify the ghosts in the houses. Also, I want to point out the other thing is um, I think it's creepier to be in a cemetery. Assuming both places are haunted. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's creepier to be in the cemetery than it is to be in the house because if you're in the house and you leave the house, you're like, okay, the ghosts are in the house. The cemetery, you're like out in the world. There's less of a... There's less of a life. just strict divide. Got it, got it. So, I mean, I think some good reasoning here. Um, 
So we have reasoning in the chat that the winner for cemetery is that the bodies will not come out of the ground. You don't know that. <laughs> Are you sure though? <laughs> Meg with mask. Hello, what if I want them to come out of the ground? Um, <laughs> you like laying up like baked goods. Yes, you see, me and Anya have different goals in mind for this competition. <laughs> um, my thoughts, my thoughts. Um, I feel like of the two, a graveyard is always going to be more haunted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like saying shark infested waters. It's not infested with sharks. The sharks live there. It's yeah. not a ghost infested graveyard. The ghosts live there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But with that said, I feel like. That would be way less malicious to me than a ghost in a house. A ghost is never in a house unless it doesn't want to be there. Well, um, okay, but you're in the graveyard. You're you're where you're not supposed to be. So unless it's a ghost that's haunting the house because it liked the house. That's true. Back. That's usually not the case. Statistically speaking, they're probably pissed. Like so. Whereas in a graveyard, we're way more likely to come across a ghost who's just a regular ghost. Um, <laughs> we're not putting out baked beans for baked the ghost. Beans. I mean, we could. Yeah, yeah. Well, I really like them. Um, so I am not sure exactly which one I think is better. I feel like I have an innate cases for architecture. Um, I would say house, maybe. but you're never gonna see me go to the basement. I mean, I think just not going in the basement is, like, the valid choice. Like, yeah, yeah. I'll go in the house, but why would I go down there? Yeah. For why? <laughs> um, I didn't expect the spirit to be. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a part. <laughs> Forgive me, don't put me in there. It is now. It is now. Um, but yeah, I didn't think that we have such If it was a, like, the hilarious thing is if it was a a uh, haunted house where like people are trying to scare you, my answer would be a graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> the scariest part about a house is that it has people in it. Um, yeah, you bring up a really good point, which is that when you mention humans aren't supposed to be in a graveyard, I'm like, that's not true, that's a shared space. At they night. aren't meant to live there. At night, though. Um, At least I don't great think people. ghosts tell time. No. Do they know that I'm not supposed to be yeah, there? Yeah, but, but you, people don't say, oh, don't go in that graveyard during the day because it's haunted. They'd say, don't go in that <laughs> graveyard during the night because it's haunted. In fact, because people are cowards. A lot of this just has to do with what we've been ingrained with oh, in yeah. specific years that we've we're, been ingrained. We're talking oh, yeah. a lot of hypotheticals yeah. here. <laughs> um, okay, we'll call this... Wait, um, I have another question. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's okay, go. so... You like graveyards. What about spending a in in a haunted house or mausoleum? Oh, well, I was already thinking mausoleum. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> so, so again, here's the thing. This is the same reason why I'm more afraid of ambulances than I am of hearses. Mm -hmm. So, a mausoleum is fine. You put a dead thing in a mausoleum. Um, a hearse is fine, but by the time you put something in there, it's already dead. Ambulances, I think, are really haunted because that's where people do the dying. Oh, that's, that's... I'm way more fun. afraid of a hospital yeah. than I am a graveyard. Especially because there's usually going to be a lot Before. more suffering. Pain. Especially in the American healthcare system. Where, okay, but where is it scarier to hear a noise from? Um, I do feel like if you're in the mausoleum and you hear a noise in the mausoleum... I mean, it could go for the graveyard question, too. If you hear a noise in a graveyard... I think that's easier because I can be like, of course there's critters in a graveyard. If you hear a noise in a house, first of all, if there's I don't hear the noises in a house, well, <laughs> during, like, daylight. <laughs> <laughs> like, my actual paranoia doesn't like noises in my own house. <laughs> Abandoned hospitals. Uh, yeah, I would not do that. <laughs> no. The answer is that we just don't do that, because that's how you get murdered. Moidled. Um, you bring up a valid point. I do think a mausoleum is better and worse. I don't think I'd be as spooked in a mausoleum I mean, as I would be I in a I kind of feel like it's just a house in a graveyard. <laughs> Wait until you're in the mausoleum and you hear on one of the walls the da 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 <laughs> you I don't know Morse code. Oh, <laughs> well, no, that's just the da 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 Oh, the shaving haircut. Yeah. Well, I know the answer to shaving haircut, though. 
<laughs> oh. Well, because they do the first part, and you do yeah, the yeah. So I will be fine from the shaven hair that goes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um, have y'all seen? Have y'all seen Roger Rabbit? The movie. It's been a while. Where yeah. Judge Doom uses it to find tunes. That would be me. Oh, yeah. Um. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Next question. Favorite. Uh, horror villain. And villain. yeah, yeah, murderer. Oh. So the question was initially about movies, but I know a lot of us here and in the audience play horror games. Mm -hmm. So we will oh. open the question to both. That's hard. Your favorite in a film, and you could even do classics and new, if you wanted. And your favorite in a game. Can I say Rubik? You can. Ruvik from The Evil Within. I do think Ruvik is a really striking character. Will you tell us he's a like very him? complex character, where it's not just he's pure evil, there's kind of multiple reasons why he's evil. Does that redeem him? No. Is he still a bastard? He's still yes. an awful bastard man. But I like it when... Somebody villains... else is second Ruvik, by the way. Right! Uh, I do like it when villains are not all one-dimensional, though one-dimensional villains are fun. Yeah, sometimes it's good to have a bad guy who's just like, there's the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Fuck that guy. Pyramid In Head can totally be a villain. I do count Pyramid, Pyramid Head is a villain. as a yeah. villain. He's an antagonist. He's, he's an antagonist yes. working In against someone's the protagonist. story, yeah. Um... If you are a man who has done things he is trying to forget in the town of Silent Hill, then Pyramid Head is a villain to you. Yes. Um, so, if you personally are a man who's trying to forget things in the town of Silent Hill, then you have something to watch out for. Um, but I don't know, I think it's a good answer, because you bring in that, like, otherworldly kind of monstrosity, like, he's not human, he doesn't function on human basics, and stuff right. like that. Then he wouldn't be a villain, he's a which we call an ex executioner, I guess. Yeah. Um. So he's he's not the same. But I do like the idea of him qualifying for this because he is a specific kind of character who exists as a force of the universe rather than like a dude. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of all the horror games I've played. Which is so many. <laughs> well, this is we'll take it as the, your answer in the moment because there's no way I, you can think of on the spot all the horror games you've ever played. Mm -hmm. Um. I really like the evil lady in Alan Wake. Mm -hmm. The dark lady. <coughs> Why, it's such I'm not an exciting answer, you mentioned her. that Mouse <coughs> but done her. That is my emotion. <laughs> yeah, I really like her. I'm trying to think of other villains. Sophia Lamb? Oh. oh. Like any Bioshocks? Stuff? I would suplex Sophia Lamb. I just disagree with her on a philosophical level. She's a collectivist, but she's bad at it. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would, it's fight on sight with Sophia Lamb. Mm -hmm. Um, the cult in Midsummer ticks me off, but they also creep me out. <laughs> so you won't fight them because you're scared of them. Yes. Um, for movies, I would have to say it's probably um, Jason. Mm -hmm. That's fair. That's fair. This is a spooky bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, your favorite classic. Do you have a favorite, like, new villain? New villain. More modern. Yeah, I know what new means. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, it's funny that you bring up Alien because I'm sitting here struggling because Alien is probably one of my favorite horror movies. So I'm like, how do I... Is the alien from Alien... A villain? I could say what, that. I don't even know that it's my favorite villain because it doesn't have much personality. Would it count as sentient? At what point did they cross the line from sentient to motivations? Just call him Mr. Jones and then it Mr. Goes. Jones! <laughs> um, so, I'm trying to think of other really good villains. Rubik is a really good answer. The mom from Carrie, also. Oh, I also I really like the um, the bad thing from Simulacra. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We hate the thing in Simulacra, actually, like on a personal level. Simulacra is a, uh, it's a game where you're up against, without giving away too many spoilers, something is in the phone. 
Oh, it's it's basically um, it follows only good, <laughs> actually. Yeah, it follows, but actually okay. <laughs> but yeah, um, people get kind of like infected with a. They get pursued by a thing over social media, and then become weird, and then they disappear. I'm trying to think of others. Like I really like. Soma, but Soma doesn't have a villain. No. Soma's villain is has science gone too far? Yeah. The answer is yes. Um. Four games. Yeah, I'm sitting here like I've never Michael. played a game. Okay, the the oh, no, yeah, William Michael. Afton from Five Nights at Freddy's. Not, so I was wrong. I said Jason. I meant Mike. Mike. Mike Myers. Like, Mike! Mike! I, I can agree with Mike. Yeah, not Jason. So, Mike. the thing I'll bring up about that is I think one of the reasons why both of us are so fond about him is because we only watched the first movie. Yes. I do think that he gets it considerably worse as time goes on. Yeah. Okay, the newest Halloween is actually... Barring the newest yeah, Halloween. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I have another one. Mm-hmm. Uh, Red Queen deserves a special mention because it was the first time I wanted to kill a baby. <laughs> um... I really like her as a character, and I really like her explanation. Um, also mention of us, uh, Jean Jacket. I was just gonna say that. Oh, tell, <laughs> tell us your thoughts about Jean Jacket. Yeah. I was just gonna that Jean Jacket was, was Jean Jacket, who exists, and we will say no. Nope. In in nope. Yeah. Nope. We, and that's all I'm gonna say because I don't want to spoil it for anyone that has seen no. it. We that hasn't seen it. it. Also, the fact that they fucking named their Bill and Jean Jacket. Jean yeah. Jacket. <laughs> what a fucking bullshit name, by the way. Um, God. Uh, Black Phillip gets a special mention for having no lines, um, and also I would adopt him. From the witch. Yes. Bitch. <laughs> from the bitch. <laughs> from the bitch. There'll be um, no discussion of that because that's a spoiler yeah, for somebody that is here. Oh. Um, I am playing Inscription right now. No Inscription spoilers in chat. Yeah. Still likes to play. Yeah. Um. What else? What horror media have I seen in my entire life? Cthulhu. None of it. None of it. I so I don't care about Cthulhu. Complicated films, Cthulhu, and I'm kind of on this one. <laughs> Did you want to elucidate on that? Uh, no, you can go on. Okay. First of all, we're talking about public domain Cthulhu because um. <laughs> the person who wrote him uh, deserves no credit, so we're not giving him any credit. Um, so, I love Cthulhu as the idea. Mm-hmm. I love the idea of Cthulhu, of this thing that is so vast and so terrible um, that you can't comprehend it, and it irrevocably changes who you are as a person. Mm-hmm. Um, terrifying. Mm-hmm. I struggle with a lot of things inspired by that. Because I find the way that it's handled usually feels like a cop out. Um, well, how uh, can you give an example? Bloodborne. Okay. So Bloodborne has a really good premise initially, yeah. where it's like something in the blood is making people crazy. This is a Bloodborne spoiler, but the game's been out for ten thousand years, so. <laughs> um, and then as it gets on, it turns out that the answer is this thing from beyond reality that's in space. Yeah. Um. And it's just and not that's the as, only answer you get. And it's not as cool as the problem they initially had, which yeah. was there's something in the blood that you need, um, but also that risks turning you into a monster. See, that's interesting because I know a couple of people who love it because of that aspect, where it, it turns out to be Eldritch. So it seems like such a tidy just, answer. It's so hard to me. It's when they try to... <laughs> it's like someone in chat said, it's when they try to pr- depict them. It just, it breaks my suspension of disbelief so much. Mm. If the thing is supposed to hurt me to perceive it, like, let me perceive it. Well, and it's just like, if you try to, I'm, you're trying to tell me that this thing is a cosmic horror and that it's unperceivable and that, oh. And it's an octopus. And then it's a, it's a man with the tentacles on his face. It's just like, well. It's just Barbosa. I'll have to talk talk to you more about that later because of. Well, future my project reasons, and I don't want to spoil it. We can have. Discuss. Yes, we can discuss it later. Um. So. So yeah. So I feel like I'm missing some really good ones. Yeah, I know I am. But there are some good answers in chat. Um. More. Chat. Do you want more Halloween talk or more nano talk? 
Yeah. Um, what time are we at now? We're at like 50 minutes in. We're not okay. right as long as that one's having a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, actually, we should do a giveaway. Okay. Um, First giveaway. So I've got everybody in chat. I've got them on the wheel. Um, <laughs> we will save your um, your question, Momo. Oh, Mackenzie's Momo, right? Oh, yeah. oh yes. Um, why do you undo my wheel, actually? Okay. No, it deleted all of my things. Um, so actually, why don't we answer that question while I refill up the wheel, because... So, the first horror book that legitimately scared me was Bram Stoker's Dracula. Because I love the medium, uh, the media where it's given to you in letters and, you know, newspaper articles, journal entries, actually, Mouse is currently reading it through. I it. was going to say so many things yes. about Dracula. So, uh, that's one of my favorites. Uh, there were a lot of good scenes from that that spooked me. And for somebody who likes horror, that's a very, I don't know, I've become desensitized to a lot of that stuff. So anything that can break through it the desensitization. You the fear and you're like, yes. yeah. That can spook me. That that I I like it. So this is not an answer to the question, but I do want to remark my favorite thing about Dracula right now as I'm reading through it mm. is just how much everyone fucking likes each other. <laughs> um, so I've talked before in chat about like reading Dracula through a queer lens because there's a lot you could draw from like Mina's friendship with Lucy and stuff like this. Mm. But even if you're reading it in the most heterosexual way, um, everyone. Every one of our protagonists just likes each other so damn much. Yeah. They yeah. think really well of one another. They work really hard for each other. And it's just, it's so nice to see in a book. I feel like a lot of times, even um, when the love triangle comes in. The thing, I, the love triangle is so good, actually. Return <laughs> to this kind of love triangle. Yes. Um, I just really like the fact that everyone cares so much. And I feel like we shy away from that a lot in stories because we feel like maybe it's not realistic mm -hmm. um, or it doesn't bring as much attention. But it makes me really like the cast. Mm -hmm. I just really like all these people because they really like each other. Um, oh, so that's have, not my answer. I have to say. We have some people vouching for Junji Ito. Yes, definitely. I haven't read any of his work. I've only seen his art in pieces on the internet. Also on Magic the Gathering cards. Mm -hmm. um, but... Oh. Uh, it was books? Uh, book, comic, yeah. Favorite horror thing that you have perceived that does not move on, though? Um, favorite. It's been a long time since I've read. Isn't there that plague book? Plague book. There's an old plague book. Yeah, that. I read that recently and I wasn't as fond of it. Um, I would probably say, um, Prey. By, yeah, yet another title named Prey. Oh yeah, um, there's so many things in this world just called Prey. Prey by Michael Crichton I read as a book. And I don't know that I'd recommend it to people. It's more of a, it's not a strictly horror book, but it's more of a, um, like, technological um, guy gets called in to investigate some stuff. And it turns out there's a swarm of nanobots going around eating people. Delicious. And then there's also other shenanigans where they're trying to become people. Uh, I love that, actually. Mm. Um, but that, this is, I'm not going to recommend my either. So, so just because I like it doesn't mean I just good. remember really liking it as a, as a teenager. Um, oh, yeah, scary stories. Scary stories for the art. art. Although I still quote, like, I am the, was it, I am the window washer, I am here to wash and wipe your windows. Um, um, the person on the phone being like, I am the wiper. And everyone's was like, that, what is that? Was that the show with the intro that had, like, the, the swing that was slowly swinging? No, this is the, this is a book or uh, a series the book, of books okay. that has legendarily art. Okay. Um, but... Okay, yeah. um, I can't think of it right now. Let me, let me get back to you. While you think, I'm going to answer, and I'm going to say it. 
Yeah, um, yeah, well, so here's the thing. It is not a good book. As an editor, I would look at this and be like, no, actually. Um, it's full of useless stuff. Oh, yeah, are you afraid of the dark? Oh, man, I love that show. Um, Sorry. I'm haunted by the doll episode, the one where the girls are turning into dolls. Yeah. Lives in my brain rent-free. I don't want to think about it right now. <laughs> um, so it... Um, not I would literally never recommend anybody read it. Um, it's too long, it's full of bullshit, but it is literally about like the way people connect together, which is catnip for me. <laughs> um so I do really like it for that reason. I read my original copy until it fell apart. Um, it was like in pieces in my hand. It was one of the only books I brought when I moved. Yeah. Um, I, it's not good. Um, and no one should read it. Um, so, oh, go ahead. There is a, kind of a, a graphic novel called Through the Woods by Emily Carroll. I really love that one. It basically, it, it mostly works through pictures with text on the page. I guess it could be a picture book, but it like... That's, it's, 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 it qualifies yeah, for Yeah, okay. it's between picture book and graphic novel. I really like that. It has a lot of, um... It has a lot of interesting tropes. It works a lot with perception of the reader, and I like it when horror Absolutely. goes through perception of the reader. So that is definitely one that I would recommend. Um, we also have a winner of our first giveaway. Winner is... Mackenzie! Oh. Um, you win a thing. Um, and you win one of three things, and that's the first winner you can pick. And it is going to be... A copy of All Bites, which is book one. Book um, one of what? This is book one of the April Gladys series. Mm-hmm. Which I wrote. By this cryptid right here. Um, having read it, I can tell you how good it is. If you would like a mystery novel with murder, um, where nothing bad happens to the dogs. Yes, no animals get harmed. Yes. But it is a murder mystery with a dog walker as the main character. Yes. Um, the other thing that you could pick, um, is my horror novella, Sweet Escape. Um, if you would like to see a really nice boy have a really bad day, um, you can get this. Or... Chat, check this out. We have, for the first time, buttons that are too dark to fucking read. <laughs> it's the way the light is. Um, so you can also choose some of these if you'd like. No. Um, so, Later I will on. contact you and you can pick your prize. Um, and we're going to spin twice more and then... The remaining two will go to the next person, ask if they want, and then whoever's will get the last one. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, congrats. Um, more horror questions? Yes. <laughs> Everyone's really into the horror questions. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Folks in the audience, I hope that you are having a really good time, because we are too. Um, so, related to our would you rather question from earlier, Yeah. what is... More fun on Halloween. Um, a corn maze or a hot test? Mm, my option's not on there. What's your option? Hanging out with you guys. Oh, I mean... That's a given every year, though. <laughs> okay, what's more fun? <laughs> what would you have more fun doing? A corn maze or a haunted house? Is there people in the corn maze? Is it, is it haunted corn maze? Well, also, it is... The question is... This is... I'm being alarmed. To go to bed alarm. No, it's not. <laughs> I don't go to bed at 8 o'clock, I swear. Um, also, yeah, I agree. I do find a lot of hurting animals and kids in horror films are usually like a Me shortcut too. to that. And you can use it as like an event horizon where like everything starts going really badly downhill. Um, but I just find people tend to get kind of lazy with it. Like, yeah, cats, kids, and dogs. I don't like it when... Yeah, the three are. So or, what was the answer to my question? So there's no specifics given in the question, nor is there any specifics given as to whether or not these things are genuinely haunted. So I would say, well, okay, is this, oh, I assume it was... It was a, a regular house corn maze. No, I assumed when you said corn maze or haunted house that it's a haunted house like a 
where people scare you. Yes. And okay. we would all vote that we don't want the haunted house because we hate people. Actually, <laughs> would you pick that? I like haunted houses. Oh. I used to not like them, and now I do because I find it's really fun to look at the set pieces of haunted house. That's houses. true. Set pieces are really. We yeah. don't usually have the kind of lighting in a haunted house to look at the set pieces yeah. properly. Yeah. I would um, say if there's no people in the corn maze, I would go to the corn maze. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to stay home. That's fair. You can answer that. Um, I'm gonna answer corn maze because I actually fucking love corn mazes like a lot. <laughs> um, corn mazes are one of the places where I can leave my physical body um, and put myself in space and have a really good time. Um, I'm also not worried about people in the corn maze because I'm very likely in a corn maze, especially with people, to point at somebody and be like, "Fuck up." Um, in a haunted house where things are more claustrophobic, where you can't always see what's going on, um, I'm like, don't touch me, what's happening? And I've done a lot of haunted houses before. Um, I don't know if they're still up, but Clifton Hill and Niagara Falls had some really famous haunted houses, and I've done two of them. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is one of my favorite haunted house stories, where I had two friends with me, and one was really short, one was really tall, mm -hmm. and they refused to look at the cues. So I had my arm up around one like this and down around the other one like this, and we just kind of shuffled our way through the whole thing. <laughs> and I was the only one using my eyes. Um, so I think I've had it with haunted houses. Um, again, I don't know. You'll never don't, touch me, Dad. In don't house. yell at me. Don't touch me. I, I, like I said, my feelings towards haunted houses moved when I remembered. They cannot legally hurt me. Oh yeah, yeah. or else I can sue. And you like the <laughs> setting. You want to I look like, at the house. I like the settings, and then I realized um, I like spooky things in a romantic way. So part of it is just I just don't like jump spouse hunting. <laughs> I don't like jump scares and so much of haunted houses. Are jump, jump scares? scares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it was a haunted house where it's like. Envi environmental horror? Oh, count me in. Oh, yeah, yeah. But a corn maze traditionally does lend itself more towards that. Yeah. A um, few years ago, they had a Five Nights at Freddy's themed haunted house in California. And I was dying to go to it. But I just could, didn't have the means to go the, to California. The only thing that would stop me from that is I'm sure that it would be full of machine noises. Oh. And I'm just like, I would rather die. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So here's a here's a more lighthearted question. Um, favorite Halloween tradition or activity that you've either that you either used to do as a child or do now? You're not allowed to answer this last year. Oh well, because <laughs> that would be I my can't answer. answer coming to visit you guys. Wait, what's the question? Favorite Halloween tradition. Chat. What are your favorite Halloween traditions? What do you do on Halloween? I like to watch Cry of Fear. Um, it's a it's a game that was made as a mod to um, Half Life Two. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Okay. So I do an annual Cry of Fear like watch playthrough, either a playthrough or I watch somebody else play, just because yeah. it is it's Halloween themed. It just gives you the Halloween feeling. It gives so me the mood. Answer this live stream. Right? <laughs> You're not allowed no. to answer this live. Stream. Otherwise, I would answer that. Okay. Uh, making Alexa play horror games for me. Yeah, making Alexa come up from Michigan to play horror games. I am happy to do. And, I and love it's horror a tradition games. we've been doing for many, many, many years. Yes. Um, I feel very lucky to be included in this tradition now because yes. it's genuinely a huge joy. Now that you've come and you've married Anya, we get to spend the Halloweens together. Um, I'm a big fan. I love watching. <laughs> you are a very specific horror game player. <laughs> and it truly is very excellent. Why are, can you, why, why are we being alarmed? Um, pick a scary movie to watch is a good one. I'm going to watch Oh yeah, we, we always try to watch Halloween. We always try to watch Nightmare Before Christmas. We mm. always try to watch. To beat on a dead horse, if you'll forgive the phrase, although it is Halloween thing. Um, I really love the original Halloween just because I love the way these people work as friends and how obnoxious yeah. they are. <laughs> um, I adore every character in Halloween. Um, <coughs> favorite Halloween tradition. Um, oh, okay. What's so, up? Uh, there's a game called Gardenscapes and 
every Halloween, they come out with the Halloween furniture line. You have to play it and get the newest line. Alyssa has been addicted to this mobile game for like three years. That's awesome. It's good. Um, on and off. I play so it. Like, it is good. Yeah, I have. I don't play it like every day for a year, but when I'm in the mood, I'll get back to it. And then I usually try and fit it with something writing where every level I beat, I have to write a sentence. Yeah. Otherwise, I get too absorbed into the game and I'll play it for hours and hours. Uh, <laughs> you would count getting hyped for Pokemon as a Halloween tradition. Yeah. Yeah. Because it always happens every November. So I do associate getting hyped for yeah. Pokemon yeah. with Halloween. Yeah. yeah. Um, other Halloween traditions I like watching horror movies, especially old favorites. Um, I like, I don't know what I really like. Um, usually I dress up as something for work, which is fun. Mm -hmm. Um, what are you going as tomorrow? Tomorrow, I'm going to work as Gengar. Gengar! Um, because all I need to have is a Gengar onesie. And Perfect. I'm going to be the world's most comfortable person. <laughs> um, what else do I like? What else do I like? Um, I like the influx of pie. Yes. Yeah. Okay. These are not, these are not necessarily traditional. Uh, favorite Halloween candy? Oh, that's one of the questions there. Okay, oh, so okay. favorite and least favorite Halloween candy. Three, two, one, go. Um, I like Max Coffee. You can't get it in America. It is top ten Halloween candy, though. Um, favorite? S rank. So we're talking about, like, Halloween size. <laughs> um, or maybe Halloween versions of already existing candy. But assume it's something you get trick-or-treating. Something yeah. you get trick-or-treating. Um, Rockets are up there. I would say thousand grams. Hmm? Hundred grams. Hundred grams, really? Hundred grams. I don't even think I've ever seen you eat a hundred grams. Well, you don't get turtles trick or treating. Oh, that's true. They are the closest thing. Um, I also really like a Snickers. Yeah, a, a bite-sized Snickers yeah. for sure. Um, you are correct because I can't like trick or treat and get Crunch Bars or Krispy Crunch or anything. Um. So all of my favorites don't do this. Stuff. I also really like Reese's. Yeah, especially, especially the little ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about you? Twix. You I like Twix? Live for Twix. I will die for Twix. Oh yeah. I love Twix. I had no idea that we were so passionate about. Oh, I am very passionate about Twix. Uh, my dream is to one day make a giant Twix candy bar. I even have a recipe I to make a giant. That. I Twix candy you. bar. How would help you with that? Um, we should just make it tomorrow. Is Mounds <laughs> mound the one with uh, coconut in it? No, that's mm -hmm. Joy. Almond Joy is coconut, isn't it? I don't know. Because I love Almond Joy. That's my else. least favorite. Because of the why would you give out a type of candy that is so, uh, like, either loved or hated? Somebody hates your fruities, by the way. Oh, but I... I love the. Fr uh, okay. <laughs> I don't care if your fr fruity flavored Tootsie Rolls. Um, I agree with it. Mule like Catherson. Um, yeah, no Krispy Kreme no, no. It's so. Mom can have all my almond joys. Mom and I will share the almond joys. <laughs> almond joys are so good, actually. They are a chocolate bar that is also a meal. <laughs> you want to eat a chocolate bar and not be hungry anymore? Oh, I like almond joys too. Hmm? Butterfingers are. Butterfingers are good. Um. What else? Sour skills. I love the fruity candy too. Um, okay, I like the Jolly Rancher jelly beans. Okay, let's 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 turn some tables here. Mm -hmm. Least favorite. Candy corn. Well, you didn't candy. have to come for me personally. <laughs> um, no, I actually am fine with candy corn. Least, least favorite. favorite Halloween candies. Least favorite. Yeah, stuff you hate getting in your bag. Um. I can't even think of any candy. Let me draw up a list of candy. What are those chocolate, like, malt balls? Oh, um, Whoppers. Whoppers. I don't like Whoppers. You hate Whoppers? Whoppers? I don't. I'll, I'll eat your Whoppers. You're just like, hate comparatively? Them. <laughs> it's just like, there's so many better things. Uh, it's a disappointment to get them in your bag. Yeah. Um, I'm not a fan of Smarties. I know you love Smarties. I'm going to complain about actual Smarties, the chocolate covered ones. Which are infinitely worse than M&M's, actually. They've become worse. They used to be better. Now they're worse. Okay, hot tamales. Those are my I will eat things. all of your hot tamales. You can I love those things. Only because things with spice or hot stuff give me heartburn. Uh, so. Somebody says sweet <laughs> fish, which is objectively correct. 
Yes. Is that um, good or bad? I hate a Swedish fish. Okay. I'll eat your Swedish fish. We'll drink. Yeah. Um, hot tamales for Swedish fish. Absolutely. Um, some strong answers. Some strong answers. Mm-hmm. I think of the other things that I hate getting. Um, I even like getting lollipops and stuff. Never sat with um, a lollipop. The candy bar that I'm least, like, Three Musketeers is probably my least favorite. Yeah, you know what? Because a bite-sized Three Musketeers is not very exciting. Yeah, what's the candy corn status for everyone? You love it. I love it. You so both love it. I, I can stand it. I'm not, not going to eat it. Um, but Mouse will eat an entire bag of candy corn. So I'm only allowed to have a little bit at a time because it will mutiny me and turn me inside out. But I do like it. Also, uh, the fucking pumpkins candy corn pumpkins, which are infinitely more textureful. We love a good texture. Okay, there are a couple of things here. One is those peanut butter kiss things. It's like where they're wrapped oh, up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are, oh, right. those are kind of on the low end of the list for me. And the bit of honeys. I've never gotten a bit of honey. Oh, I know what my favorite, my absolute favorite is. Those square caramels. Oh, we do okay. love to get a caramel. They're caramel so, so good. good. Until they get warm and you can't unwrap them. Yeah, the soft ones. <laughs> oh, man. That are, like, wrapped up in the clear plastic. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and yeah. you have to, like, unwrap them using a fork because they're so squished into themselves. So good. See, I, I see a lot of people who are, like, saying that they like certain things of things that we dislike. And then it's like, we just need to get a group together and then just have a trading Yes. Session. We're talking all of Halloween candies. candy stock yeah. exchange. <laughs> Matthew would love blow pops, right? I love blow pops. Yeah. I love that was virtually another thing every I was lollipop. Like, oh, I don't really friendly. care. I'm a big lollipop person. Mm. Um, the ones I can't find here are the white ones with the primary colors in them. And they're my favorite. <laughs> they're very good. More Canadian candy. I'm just straight in here, y'all. Um I think we do another Halloween question and then we spin and we talk about writing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Chat. What? <laughs> Dream Halloween costume. You could go as anything for Halloween. What are you? It doesn't Dream have to be spooky. Halloween costume. Just the thing you want to be. It doesn't have to be reasonable. Just the thing you want to be more than anything else. Stunned, Chad, and the admin. Can I be Foxy from Five Nights at Freddy's? Yes, you can be Foxy. <laughs> I want like you get to be a pirate and an animatronic and a fox. Dream I want to have like the most realistic, creepiest Foxy. Absolutely, <laughs> ten out of ten, perfect choice. <laughs> You could be the snake wife. The snake wife. Um, Vraska's a really good choice. For people who don't know, should we? She's a gorgon lady from magic. Yeah, Um, is there not a homestuck named Vraska? It's Vriska. Okay, yeah, not the homestuck. Not the (laughs) homestuck. The magic (laughs) gathering gathering lady. So we got Foxy, we got Vraska. Oh, I will get to Cockatiel's question in just a moment. Um. Because I'm struggling internally with this question. Okay. Um, I think I have to answer with, like, my dream costume that I keep putting off. Mm-hmm. Um, I would like to be... <laughs> 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 I have to laugh on there for you, yeah, absolutely, 10 to 10. Um, reasonable costume that I would do for Halloween. Set of for me, yeah. Um, I'm not tall enough. Um, <clears throat> dream costume. Mm-hmm. I've talked about doing it for years. I've never done it. I always went out and do something else. Trace Kishinata. I knew it was going to be Trace. Because I keep saying I'm going to cosplay as Trace Cushonata and that I don't do it because I'm a wimp and also an idiot. We have a spooky creature approaching. She might come into the chat. She might. She might Hi, creature. Um, <laughs> absolutely. We can make room for her if she wants to go in the chair also. Hello, kitty kitty. Um, so. She's very confused. 
You can pick her up. We got a second one on her. Okay, so let's let's talk about Sorry, hit turn my phone. Talk to your loudest question. Okay. Which was? Which was? Did it disappear? Give me the comment. Do we Okay. It's not showing me the question on here. Oh, she's very content. Cockatiel, would you be able to repost your question? He's not in the um, chat. Someone else. Oh, okay. It. Let me try and get away from the camera. We're gonna go up here. We're gonna go. Favorite, least favorite, most hated, um, Halloween slash horror cliches. Good question, actually. So let's do that one. Um, I wish people in the whole like people in horror movies trope like being the dumbest people ever <laughs> you want some smart characters in other words that's part of the reason why like <laughs> i like halloween so much is because it doesn't feel like the characters are in a horror movie mm -hmm. like they just don't do and i realize people are stupid but it is and I was thinking about this about Dracula earlier. So, on the one hand, you like Halloween because everyone in Halloween is just regular fucking people. Um, and on the other hand, the funny thing about reading Dracula is that nobody at the beginning of Jonathan Harker, who does not know he's in a vampire novel. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is extremely funny. Um, so I think there's some, I think there are ways, like a give and take there, like there's a reasonable amount of idiocy you kind of expect to see. But it is hard to sell that to an audience who knows it's a horror film. Um, like, you can look at a situation and be like, oh yeah, I think that's a reasonable mistake for them to have made. But we're usually less charitable mm -hmm. when we're watching because we have outside knowledge. It's so hard to divorce from that. Um, but yeah, people making dumb decisions in horror movies, absolutely. Mm -hmm. 10 out of 10. Valid. Um, favorite? Least favorite? I've never... And I know people love them. I know they love them a lot and have a collection of their favorites, but I've never really liked slashers. That's yeah, fair. That's same. just because I like I like more complicated villains. I like more complicated antagonists. Or, you know, like sentient And it's hard that. if they're just a slasher to spend the kind of time with yeah. them that you need for them to get that complex. Yeah. Not impossible, but difficult. But I know a lot of people love slashers, so it's mm -hmm. just a matter of taste in that way. <laughs> what are your guys' favorite kinds of movies? I mean, any kind of... I mean, paranormal romance, but that's just me. <laughs> do, I, do I not like slashers because it takes away the, uh, the you know, opportunity to romance the... the, the killer? Like, yes. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Um, anyway. Any kind of uh, environmental horror. Mm -hmm. Oh, where it's like the villain <laughs> is the town. Silent Hill. Um, yeah. Those you like it. Yeah. The bill, the place is the cursed. Vibes. The vibes. Um, also, yeah, that's a good point. People getting murked for two hours is too much. But also, it's not enough because it's only for <laughs> two hours. Valid, valid thing. Yeah. Um, I love, I love a good environmental horror. Big fan of cursed and bad places. I love a good, um... Like a cultural horror? I love a good, like, this specific thing is happening because of a, um, like, not necessarily because of a tradition, but because of the way traditions intersect with reality. Mm -hmm. So that's Fatal Frame, that's, um, I love Fatal Frame. it's Detention. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so I, I love that. These things are coming to bear because of the things that happened before. Um, I really need to play more pathologic for you. I want to eat pathologic with a fork in it. Just shovel it into my mouth. Um, so I really, I like the cyclical kind of the way tradition feeds into the current day thing of a horror. I like to environmental, situational, mm -hmm. the town is cursed, there's something wrong here, I like that. Things that I hate. Um, I hate showing me the monster. 
I, I do not want to see the monster. It's very hard to do. Yeah, very hard to. Don't. I sometimes I want to see them. Sometimes I don't. That it depends are, on what. There are exceptions, but yeah. I, by and large. I don't want to see it. Your monster design will never be worse than what I'm thinking of. <laughs> um, not that I'm specifically inventive, but because whatever I'm conjuring is specifically girl. scary to me. Um, so, most of the time, once you see a monster, it becomes a concrete threat that you can then deal with. I'm less excited about that. Um, don't, 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 don't want to see it. Um, <laughs> Seeing the monster will only arouse me, not frighten me. That's me. It becomes a <laughs> concrete thing that you can murder or date. Um, and that's Which, less scary. I want to talk about the Mothman book I have. Let's talk about it. I started it, and the reason that I didn't quite finish it yet is because there is a definite tonal shift in the book. Um, like, okay. the first half, you are... <laughs> <laughs> She's just burying herself in her clothes. Um, okay. Because, like, the first part, like, halfway through the book, it switches, like, threats. It switches yeah. the antagonist. Yes. And so I'm having a time trying to pin down that shift in a way that feels authentic yeah. and won't cheapen the first part. So you're putting more <laughs> thought into it than the people who wrote Evil Within 2. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to point out, uh, I think, a piece of media that shows you the monster and it's still really cool. Nope. Nope. The entire point of nope is that. Yeah. Um, and yeah. thus it's done very well. Yeah. Um, it is It is possible. It is alien. Possible. I think it's very hard to do, yeah. I also but. think that one of the characters, the alien is... Um, there's a certain type of movie that is about the monster. Um, yeah. I think Alien mm -hmm. counts as that um, because part of that is... This is the right. monster. That's the monster. Oh, it's the monster. It's making monster noises. <laughs> also, Mama. The movie Mama. Oh, I thought you were saying she was Mama. <laughs> Mama! No, no, no. no this is the... Grandma. The, the movie Mama. Okay. It's a, it's a horror movie where... Uh, I guess I don't want to spoil it. Okay, don't tell me, but I'll believe you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to spin again, or we're going to talk about writing stuff. I have a winner. Um, I forgot that I spun it before I tapped over it, so we've had a winner for a while. Uh, what is Brandon? Oh. So, uh, you will win a thing. Mm -hmm. um, which thing will you win? It will depend on what Momo picks, but you will have your choice of two things, and we'll send them to you. Mm -hmm. um, you can enjoy your free items. Free things. Um, it you! It, it you. Um, so if you guys have more horror questions for us, or for the other people in the chat, mm -hmm. um, stick them in there. <laughs> but we're going to talk about Nano Banana before Rana. we wrap everything up. So, what are y'all working on for Nano this year? We should introduce Nano. Oh, we should let everyone know the Nano is. Nano is National Novel Writing Month. It actually has a website. It's um, where you write fifty thousand words in thirty days. You don't necessarily have to finish, but it is all about trying to build a habit of writing and challenging yourself to put down words and it gives you a nice deadline and usually the act of getting a lot of writers together and writing at you know similar times gives you the motivation to keep going even if you don't write 50,000 words yeah. even if you write half that that's still more words than you had at the beginning of the month mm -hmm. um so yeah the goal is 50,000 words 30 days yeah, it is, it is actually it is so, so much. much. It comes out to, what, like 1,600 words a day? And I cannot stress this enough. Even if you... I'm sorry. Go! No. Okay. Even if you start and you stop writing three days in, do not feel like you have to stop 
or you have to write a billion words to finish. Because even if you lower that amount, even if you write a hundred words a day, that's still good and it still helps you to start writing. It maybe gets you into a habit. So you do not need to stop. It, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Anything over zero is a victory. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's more words than you had. Um, so that's NaNoWriMo. Um, we participated in it every year. Uh, because it's fun, it's a good chance to socialize. Um, yeah, it is like Inktober. Yeah, right? it's yeah. like the writing equivalent of Inktober. Um, another another seasonal tradition. Um, the artists go ham for an entire month, mm -hmm. um, and then the writers just lose it for an entire month. Um, and it is the same thing. Like by sharing prompts in Inktober, you can look at whatever else's work is and find inspiration. Yeah. Um, or find things you want to work on. By writing together with each other, you can find motivation to stick to your projects, and you get to do fun things. <laughs> Dewey is burrowing ever deeply into Anya's she's cloak. She's confused as to what she's doing, I think. Dewey. That's because she doesn't have any brain cells. Dewey is a grandma. Interesting pet. Honor I remember a blood by virtue of her living in this house and being a <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> um, Hi. She's very content where she is. Okay. One leggy. <laughs> we see one leggy. Hello. Yee. Um. What y'all working on? I am finishing my second draft of Silky Dust. I'm going to finish editing that so I can get it off my damn okay, list. Hey, right. if you say this book has dilks in it, I know that there's at least okay. three people in chat who are going to lose their shit. It does not have just one will dilf, but two dilfs who date each other. So, <laughs> I, was like, I know a couple of people in this chat. Um, I'm very excited for it. What's it about? Uh, okay, so, as I was watching Twilight, the, you know, the vampire... Well, I, I both read twi the Twilight novels and watched the Twilight movies. I couldn't help but notice that I would much rather the books be about the dad, the sheriff, uh, the Bella's dad, Charlie. And it would also be a lot better if, the, uh, if Charlie were to date the vampire dad. And so that is what Silky Dusk is about. It is not those characters specifically, it is my characters, you know, my original characters. But it should be noted that it was inspired by Twilight. You look this is when I think there's ripe interaction and that isn't explored. Um, <laughs> I think there's chaos in chat. I think my mom is now used to, I mean, I, it should be noted that my mom at least was in chat. She hasn't commented for a while, but she knows that I am I, I am this life, so. She knows what you're about. I am she read Harry Potter fan fiction, so. <laughs> yeah, so she's been in this, in this game for a long time. I need it. <laughs> yeah. Are you doing all right over there? Um, she was slowly sliding off Charlie of my is lap. perfect. That's why I wanted him to be, you know. Um, what are you working on for Nano? <laughs> she's now in the couch. <laughs> in I mean, the couch. She seems pretty happy about it, so. Um, I will be... I mean, some of it will probably be miscellaneous writing, because I've been doing a lot of miscellaneous writing. That's all right. Um, but I will be trying to work on Clearest Blue, which is a fantasy adventure romance, lesbian romance novel about um, two cute fish girls. I appreciate that you're looking at me. Will you do a close-up of the button? Gay for Andy? Oh, I will, I will, as we talk. Um, um. <laughs> so, basically... Oh God, I'll save you. I'll buy you a minute. Yeah. If everyone would like to see our Clearest Blue-related merch. <laughs> Behold. Behold. Art provided by Mint Fox Mimi, whom we love. Um... But yeah, basically it's about this <laughs> up-and-coming singer, angel fish girl named Fiona, and she meets the bodyguard of the queen, Indy, who is a war hero and is buff. Um, I can't do it. And in the meantime, uh, 
B gets involved with some kind of shady people while she's trying to uh, become a singer, and someone tries to sell her to someone else. Um, I don't know what else make you describe my book for me, I guess. Um, you said basically all yeah. the most important points. Um, two very different but very cutie fish ladies. Um, and the troubles they run into in the hookup they're trying to have. <laughs> um, and everyone keeps... Lots of yeah. gay panic. Lots of crime. Um, I've been trying a bunch of assholes. Yeah. This is a book with the terrible raccoon in it. Allow me to say that I love it when both Anya and Mouse write from the point of view of their villains. <laughs> I um, love seeing their... The villain chapters are some of my favorite chapters mm-hmm. in this book so far, so... Wait till I write the Final Fantasy-inspired book, because oh, you are going to feast. Um, going to Faust. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a good joke. Yeah. It's a good I'll joke. You're around. allowed to say it. You want to go over there? Really? You can go over there if you want. Come Who's your pretty baby? Oh, dewey, dewey, dewey. Oh, time to hang out like this. <laughs> um, so, I'm working on Iron Gate, um, which is book three in Heaven Horizons. Um, it's been kicking my ass for the last two years. Um, so, I'm going to kill it. I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to murder it to death until it is booked. Um, that's my plan. I also have another horror novel that I might work on as a side project during Nano. Um, it is, I've described it as Aliens Meets Backrooms meets <gasps> Severance. I know what this one is. Um, <laughs> so, that might be a thing that I work on when I need a break from Iron Gate. Um, for those of you who have any idea of what Iron Gate's about, uh, it's stuff. So, um, but I'll give I'll give the spoiler free synopsis, which mm-hmm. is uh, book three of Highland Horizons. So, uh, Anna and Karan are trying to live their happy li- happily ever after. Um, when a strange ship from across the ocean lands in their city, and then everything gets worse from there. Lands in their city. Lands in their city. Lands on top of their city. Oh, no, it doesn't. No. And not in this version. There was a draft where it did, yeah. uh, but they actually dock it, yeah. like people who like understand people how like. to park ships this yeah. time. <laughs> um, that's mm-hmm. fine. There's a lot of other things they don't understand. Where are you going? If I finish I Silky Dusk, then there are there is some Pokemon fan fiction that I want to try. Yes. To so those are my goals for now. Okay. So other Nana questions. Um, what roadblocks do you expect to hit this Nano? What do you expect to struggle with? My usual malaise. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and how do you plan for that? Like, what do you do? When you go into NaNoWriMo, and you're like, I know I'm probably going to hit either depression or disinterest, or how do you... I have learned to do one of two things. Either I start writing longhand, just notes, or, like, writing actual, like, passages longhand. Okay. Or I do voice recording and then transcribe it later. And that helps you get your momentum back? Yes, because that stuff works different parts of your brain. Mm -hmm. And it will, like, you know, it fires up more synapses, and sometimes it will help me to look at things from a different perspective, and I can get past a roadblock. And if another one comes along, then I just, you know, try experimenting Swap them out. Yes, swap them out. That's excellent. Anya, <coughs> what um, kind of roadblock do you expect to hit? I expect to hit motivation roadblock. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I think that's very common for Nano, especially oh, yes. like in week two. Well, I think for me it's because I live the work from home life and it's kind of, it can be kind of hard to switch gears. Yep, very, very. From work to, uh, to Nanoing. But I think, you know, getting out of the house now that we can actually get out of the house mm. again, um, helps with that. Yeah, write-ins where we get to go to places and write. Mm-hmm. Um, a change of scene can really help. Yeah. Um, I think um, that's a fair take. I'll inevitably run into troubles with my outline and I will roll around on the floor and yell at Mouse about it. 
Um, it out. Um, to be fair, rolling around the floor and yelling at mouse has worked very well for you in the past. Um, I do see it in the crocodile hour question. I'll put it like this. I do see it. Um, so I'm gonna answer this one and then we'll answer Um, Roblox I expect to hit. Um, the last two days have been really rough on me because I've either gotten desperately ill, um, or cracked my brain halfway through. Um, so, will either of those things happen again? The world's greatest mystery. Um, if I do get very sick again in the middle of November, I will allow myself to be sick and simply not guilt myself for it, and that means not doing nano. Yes, do not guilt. That um, is what I, I, it's I the run thing a, that stops you from creating. I run a thing about the brain and creativity um, and mental health, and that is one of my primary things is no guilt. Just take a step back and figure out why you're not doing the thing or exactly what is holding you back. And that will be half of the battle. So, if it is something <laughs> terrible that happens to me halfway through the month, then I will simply not do the thing, and that will be that. I will cut back, and I'll go back to fun writing and stuff that's not for professional products, mm -hmm. and that's fine. Um, but usually it's, um, I have ADHD, and I don't want to work on this anymore. And that's kind of why I have the ADHD! That's kind of why I have the secondary product. Um, so, at least I can do something productive. Um, I would love in a dream world to work only on Iron Date until it was done. And sometimes you hit the groove where that's all you want to work on. Excellent, great, I can't count on that. Um, so I like having a secondary, also professional work that I can do, um, so I don't feel like I'm spinning my wheels. Um, I'm gonna see more of this question. Because again, it's not coming up in my comments. So! Two questions. Two questions. Uh, first question. Crocodile Hour asks, when you decide to use a monster in your story, what technical purpose does it serve? Is it a character like Dracula, an event like War of the Worlds, or an environmental factor like Pitch Black? If it's a character, what kind of role does it play? I mean, eight times out of ten when there's a monster in my book, it's the romantic love interest. So, uh. <laughs> yes, so your monster is then a character, a character with a very specific role, which is a, if not a protagonist, than an ally to the protagonist. Yes. Love yes. Um, I mean, that's a nice clean answer, though. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting predictable, but you know what? No it's shame. Called reliable. I like it. Yes. You're not predictable. You're reliable. Plot twist. Plot twist. Author writes what they like. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anya. Um. I would say. I mean, it very. It varies. A lot based on what I'm trying to do. That's, I think that's the I, you can, so like, there's characters, like what's the difference between a monster character and a human character that is a monster? Like, <laughs> nothing. So there's that, but also like, if I think about wild, there's a lot of monsters in wild that are not characters. Um, there's big just because the world is inhabited by big creatures that inevitably will show up in the book. Um, there's a big crab that they fight at one point. We do love it. And I would crab. consider those monsters. And it's just, I mean, it, it depends on the setting and the scene and what you're trying to do. It's not like I'm like, oh, I'm going to put a monster here. Should I make it a person or a creature? Alexa... Tends to write monsters with these specific goals in mind, and they tend to be similar goals because you are trying to do specific things with those monsters routinely. Mm -hmm. Whereas Anya is more like this situation is or this position is occupied by a monster, and that monster can vary hugely depending on what you're doing with it. Yeah, um, Brandon, there. There is no second chat for this particular live stream. Um, there aren't as many people commenting now, but we also have a Discord where a lot of our writers get together and chat. Yes, so they have the live stream. questions from Discord. Yeah. Um, which is very kind. <laughs> um, my answer is more along your lines, which is that because monsters are so variable, I use them to do a lot of different things. Um, and then also, like, where are we drawing the line between a physical monster and a monstrous human? Mm -hmm. Because you can say a lot of the same things. Um, because um, you have occasionally 
monstrous people with different amounts of character depth, depending on what you're using them for in the story, and the same can be said for actually monstrous monsters. Yeah. Um, historically, I think I do a little of both. A lot of my monsters tend to be characters so far. Um, yeah, it really, it, it really just depends. Like. Then there's melancholia where they're fighting monsters. Oh, that's true. Monsters are in their environmental <laughs> melancholia, melancholia like pitch black. Um, um, Stone Coast monster is a protagonist. Um, like, like stop and go as a monster. I was gonna bring up Shotuns. And Shotuns. Y'all will make Shotuns soon the line. because he's in that story that I'm gonna be working on for now. Um, and Shotuns is an antagonist who is a monster, who has some characterization, as much as the cast, probably not, but he's more of a character than he is an environmental he's factor, definitely like, except he's tied to the environment. We think about, like, Shotuns and Stop and Go at the same wavelength, um, but Stop and Go is way more of a monster than Yes, than and character. Stop and Go is also, maybe relatedly, more environmental yeah. than Shotuns is, so these names mean nothing to y'all. Um, but they will as these works are put out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it really varies. I'm going to scroll up again to see the other question because they're not showing up on my laptop. We can supply the links to the Discord on our Facebook um, so that people can join it if they want to. When you need a monster's element to your story, what guides you to choose a monster instead of a dangerous human? What leads you to decide what kind of monster you want to use? Uh, I think I've kind of answered that already. Like. I think so. Uh, I also think that for as much as they are conceptually the same thing, I usually approach it by the thing that I have. I either have a monster <laughs> that I'm yes. using, or I have a monstrous human that I'm using. Yeah. Um, and that decision happens, like, well in advance. Yeah. Um, I'm never sitting at the point where I need a bad thing, like an antagonistic force, there deciding are, if it should be monster. There are things like... Like... In Wild, I'm like, okay, they should have an encounter with a beast here. And let's make it, you know, the crab, or let's make it yes. a sandworm. Or but I would mm-hmm. think that, oh, did you have more? No. I would think that in that circumstance, you already decided it's a monster monster. Correct. Because your human monsters are off doing other things. Correct. Um, it's not, yeah, it's not like I sit down and go, human monster or monster monster? Yeah, it's like, this is going to be a monster monster, but now I get to design and, which and one. a lot of the time it is, like you said, where it's, like, I made stop and go, and I'm like, oh, I want to write about this monster, how do I make a story about, that features this monster? Yeah, I can, I have also seen a lot of people decide on monsters depending on symbolism. That's true. So, a lot of Silent Hill stuff gets based on the type of symbols that they want the monsters to represent. I also think that most of the time that still is a ahead of time, you're like, yeah, I'm yeah. going to use a human for this specific interaction and a monster for these interactions. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I do have our last prepared question of the night. So, I'm going to spin and we'll answer the question. This is for the last of the giveaways. And my laptop is over here, by the way. You don't get to win again. <laughs> you also don't get to win again. Come on. You should have had it take choices off. The winner is Mule Accountersen. So, Mr. Mule, you will win a thing. Um, we will figure out what is left in the prize pool, and we will ship it to you. Um, and for our last question of the night, what flexibilities or, um, changes have you built into your nano routine that help you? I mean, I know I've said it before, but ever since I introduced voice recordings, that has helped me immensely. You can say it again. And also Poke Nano. (laughs) Tell us about Poké Nano. Poké Nano is, as we described before, every November there is inevitably a new Pokémon game. So I get the Pokémon game, and then for every Pokémon battle, I will write either a certain amount of words, like 50 words, or I will write a sentence between those two. Mm -hmm. And usually that makes it so, like... 
as I write a sentence, go back to the game, oftentimes I'm still thinking about what I want to write next, so I don't get stuck where I'm just kind of sitting there trying to, you know, figure out what I want to say next. I can, you know, I keep my hands busy and my mind works. B Z D H D. Yeah, B Z A D H T. I love it. I love it. Lots and lots of screaming. <laughs> lots and lots of screaming. I mean, if that is a tactic, that works. Um, so tell us about streaming. Tell us why help. Oh, I I'm going to take this completely seriously. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I think talking out the problem that I have tends to help because a lot of times I'm overcomplicating things. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to be able to explain them. Um, because then you can be like, oh, I could actually just simplify this if I did X, Y, Z. See, that's a completely valid tactic. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you feel really snarled in something, you want to talk it out so you can pull all the pieces out. That makes a lot of sense. I will say, when you decided to <coughs> write 75,000 words instead of 50,000, that allowed you to think of it as, like, throwing all of your energy into the one book a month because you knew that you were going to be busy during all of your other months. 25,000 instead of... Yeah, 25... Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, well, That's mouse, not me. I remember, <laughs> I remember one time you were trying to hit a higher word amount. I think that was mouse. Okay. Now, a lot of time I do a half nano. So I Whenever I hit more words, it's by accident. Um, <laughs> and sometimes I'll spread, spread nano over October and November, and then I'll do 25 and 25. Um, but yeah... I think, actually that is a good point, that like a lot of times I end up just doing 25 instead of 50 because that's just easier on my brain. Um, I think that's a perfectly good built-in flexibility, which is just have a goal that doesn't stress you out. Yeah. Um, maybe the goal of 50,000 words is just too many fucking words. You can do less. If it's 50,000 and oh God, I, I get behind, one. then... I just don't do it. <laughs> because but, you like, feel like crushed by it. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I, my flexibility tools, um, having multiple projects helps me. Um, helping other people with their projects also helps me. It gets my brain boiling. Um, oh yeah. And also having a hack is having both of us writing. I, so this is my, this is my kryptonite. This is, you want to know how I'm going to fail a nano? Is if I need to stop writing. <laughs> it's really hard. I to can do it only myself. write if Anya's writing. It's really hard, yeah. It's the only way. But if Anya's writing, I can do two nanos in a month. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I like, I really, um, a detailed outline not so I have to follow it, but so I know where all my pieces are, so I can move them around. Right. Um, having more than one serious project that I can switch between if I'm not feeling too hot about one of them. Um, going to other places, because if I go to a place, um, I have to write. Because I came all the way to the place. Mm -hmm. um, it's different if I'm at home and I'm like, oh, I can fucking put this off. But if we go to the library or go to Starbucks, um, we are there. And we are there to write. Um, so if I slack off, I'm fucking wasting everyone's time. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are things that I've built in, um, that really helped me. Um, getting off my own fucking case, um, is the number one key to getting anything done. Um, I don't get any, like, nano words done one day. That's fine. I did RP posts. Whatever. I'm yeah. still writing. Mm -hmm. Um, so that is all the questions we have. Thank you, chat, for all of your questions and for all of your time tonight. It was fun to hang out. Yeah. We are so happy to be back. Um, we will be <coughs> at... Uh, CAD. CAD. Con Elves Relief in Chicago. We will be at Andrew <coughs> Milwaukee with a motherfucking table. Um, we have in a table at CAD. Too. Milwaukee. We do have a table at CAD. Yeah. But us having a table at CAD, CAD happens. Yeah. yeah. And he finally gave us a table. We're really happy about it. We will be at Anime Magic. Yes. Not Anime Midwest, Anime Magic. Yes, anime it happens Chicago. in August. It is in Chicago. Um, so thank you guys for all of your questions. Um, 
winners, I will contact you about your free shit. Um, I'll get them shipped out to you as soon as we can. Um, everybody, have a good nano if you are a nano person. Happy Halloween. Yeah. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. If you um, want to talk more, come join our Discord. Yeah, um, a lot of you are in Discord and or have yeah. us um, on Discord already. So if you have more questions, hit us up. Mm-hmm. Um, but thank you guys. You are the best. Yeah. Bye. Uh, we'll see you later. Awkward button hitting. <laughs>